going on everybody this video we're going to look at how to treat trading like a business and formulate a winning strategy and mindset that'll help push you towards success so here's a quick list of the content that we're going to cover in this video i'll make sure to put timestamps up on the screen if you want to skip to something specific but we're going to cover the objective of how to treat trading like a business a strategy that works um, the tasks you have to accomplish and then some psychology tips that are sprinkled all throughout this video all right so what is the main objective well, a question you have to ask yourself is if you were to start a business, what do you need to learn? How would you get to 10K a month and how can you constantly improve? These are questions that everyday business owners are asking themselves as soon as they start off and as they continue to grow in their process. Um, trading is no different, right? All of these goals and objectives are achievable and questions you should be asking yourself. Now, the main question that most are probably concerned with is the monetary goal, right? How do you get to X amount per month or X amount per year? And what is a strategy that you can use every single day to achieve that task in under X amount of time, right? If you're trying to do it in 90 days or maybe a year or two years, how do we get there within the time limit, but also worry about the process more than achieving the goal in the long term? So obviously objective one is what do you need to learn? I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you already understand ICT concepts. Um, you need to have a trading model. So something that's been back tested and that you've studied for a while that proves to be constantly available and can constantly produce some sort of a result over a short or long-term period. And obviously psychology is going to be your most important tip and tool that you need to learn throughout your trading career and constantly implementing it every day. So you have to have a clear goal, right? So maybe that's 10K per month. We'll use that for the example in this video and a strategy and implementation of that strategy to get there. Now, if you don't have a goal or you don't have a strategy that's written down and you can follow, you're kind of just traveling blindly, right? You're not going to have any way of quantifying your growth or seeing areas that need to be improved on or areas that have been improving and they need to keep the same and that goes into objective number three of how do we improvise and reflect on that strategy to constantly improve it over the years, over the months, and to make this really a long-term career. So the mentality you need to have is one of long-term, first of all, and you have to set a goal for yourself that is achievable, but not too easy. Second thing is you need to have the self-confidence that it will happen and it is possible to smash through those goals. So whatever your goal is now, eventually in the future, a year from now, two years from now, you will exceed those goals and have even further um, targets that you're shooting for. You are your biggest cheerleader and your biggest critic. So you have to both support yourself and critique yourself on the things that you're doing right and wrong. Visualize yourself as a successful trader. Visualize yourself as someone who is disciplined, someone who is patient, someone who is successful and your actions will follow. You may not follow immediately, but those actions will eventually build up to the outcome you're looking for, right? So same thing over here, your process focus instead of goal focus. That comes to obviously number three is having a written or drawn up plan. They'll make it difficult not to reach these goals by the end of the set period. So if that's 12 weeks or 90 days or one year, whatever that period may be, it'll make it difficult to not reach that. So you have to keep your daily expectations low and focus solely on the execution of the plan. So the main thing that we've been all waiting for is the strategy. So what is the strategy that we're gonna use in order to reach our goal? So reverse engineering the goal into achievable daily tasks that will produce the desired outcome. Clearly writing out a model and rules that you must follow each day. Now this screenshot here was taken from a video by Matt Shields, he's a great YouTuber. I suggest you check him out, he covers things about business growth and SMMA, I highly recommend his channel. So just to look at this screenshot, right? We have our 12 week goal, maybe that's 10 K a month. And then you have individual actions that eventually reach to a target being met, which eventually reach to a key performance indicator being met, which then over time produces the goal. Now an in-depth system of what that may look like for an everyday trader like us will look something like this. So you have your 12 week goal. Now this, this, span of time could be any time he suggests 12 weeks so i'm gonna use this for that example here but if our 12 week goal maybe is minimum of 65 nasdaq points per week you could also expand this to a monthly goal but for here we'll use 65 nasdaq points per week how do we get there 
if you're focused just on this goal, like most people are every day of how can I be green? How can I make this week green? But they don't worry about the steps. You'll never get that outcome, right? So we can now break this down backwards. We can reverse engineer into daily tasks that we can focus on. So two major key performance indicators are going to be your volume KPI and your quality KPI. And each of these will contribute to reaching the goal, just like everything else in this model will. So first we'll look at the volume KPI. Well, if you're looking at one to two winning trades per week, how do we get to those one to two winning trades? Well, if you're looking at the ATM model, which is what I personally use, then you just see one to three ATM models per week formulate. How do we get that? Two to three high probability days, meaning we have to avoid low probability days if we just want to focus on the daily execution. Then here's some profiles I like to look for and the days that will produce these profiles that will then produce the high probability days, which then will produce the setups into the winning trades into this would be 830 news days and no red news on the current day or the day after. So based on the economic calendar, if I were to just focus on these days, I know that over time, in 12 weeks, if I continue to perform those steps, it will give me my volume KPI, one to two winning trades per week, hopefully into this, right? Now, obviously one to two winning trades is the best case scenario. So if you have a losing day or a losing week or even a losing month, it doesn't have as much weight to it as if you were just looking for a green day every single day or a winning trade every single day. Now for the quality KPI, if we're looking at one to two trades per week, winning trades per week, you need to have 33 to 100 points per trade. Um, that comes from a target on the chart that has to be at least around 35 points away. I prefer that. And then if you look even further down the chart, you got clear targets and then preferred targets that you can be looking at ERL and IRL. Then you can start adding this stuff up, right? You have your preferred high probability days you can focus on. Preferred targets, they have to be clear, obvious daily bias targets. If it's not clear, then there's no setup, then there's no trade. If it violates any of these orange boxes, it will eventually not lead to the goal being met. And we're going to do everything on our power to reach that. And obviously, if we're targeting our 35 points, how do we get those 35 points? Well, it would be whatever model you're using. And then the number of executions per day on a max right? So one execution max per day. Well, how do you get that? You've got your rules of engagement, right? Your max contract limit, your stop, your psychology, all which influence your execution, which influence your model, which influence your targets, quality, and target. And then that, these three are based on risk management, discipline, and good decision-making. So in summary, over those 12 week goals, you get paid to look at high probability days, good targets, and good decision-making. If you focus on those daily tasks, your target will be met. And this is how you stay process-focused, right? Now you have individual things to be looking at, and you don't have to worry about the goal being met because in due time, it will be met. But it's extremely important that you create one of these because it'll help build the confidence and the trust that you need to treat trading like a business. So what are some tips that we can look at to help implement these tasks? Well, Obviously, you already covered some of these. Um, one important thing is you have to be okay with missing setups per week. If we only need one or two winning trades per week, then there's going to be you know three to four days that you don't even have to look at the charts or that you're going to quote unquote miss setups. But if it doesn't line up with your model, is it really a missed setup, right? If you're only trading the New York session, do you look at the London session and think, oh, that's a miss setup? It's not, right? It's just noise. It's just, that's what the market did on that specific day. I wasn't looking for it. That wasn't my model. I'm fine with missing it. Um, another thing is sticking to one model. So you should not be using all of those rules and then changing out the models if it produces a couple losses during a week or a couple losses during a month. You have to stick to one model, right? What the one model that you know is going to work best for you, that'll provide the A plus setups um, and that you've back tested and can trust confidently will produce you the result. Obviously, you got to follow the rules of engagement and constantly checking and improving your psychology. So this rests on your risk management. And it rests on you being able to follow your rules because now there's even more emphasis. There already was emphasis for sure, 
but hopefully it's placing more emphasis on that daily task of following the rules and the daily task of being disciplined instead of just trying to trade whatever is on the charts at that given time. And all these tasks together will eventually give you your delayed outcome. So now after completing these, it becomes extremely difficult to reach those goals that you have um, by following the process. And it's better than just rushing it, right? Which you've probably done in the past, just trying to quickly get to those goals, rushing it, and it ends up taking longer than anticipated. Even more tips. Right, so the main idea of this treating trading like a business is you have to choose what you want most over what you want now. And you have to resist the impulse of over leveraging, over trading, and suffer the pain of discipline. Because it'll always be uncomfortable after you take a loss or after you take a win, not being greedy, not over trading, not wanting to push that button. It'll always be painful because your body is telling you to be impulsive, to click the button. And you have to sit through that with your mind and force yourself basically not to touch the screen anymore or to turn off the charts or turn off your computer, whatever it may be. Tip number two, you have to stay organized. So you should have a calendar, you should have a notion, whatever, even a journal helps you stay organized over these 12 weeks. Healthy habits. So that means you have to take care of your body, take care of your mind and remove the poor habits they have in your life, right? So maybe that's social media for you. A lot of easy, free dopamine that you get out of your phone or get out of your computer is not going to help you in trading when you can easily get free dopamine in trading too by just clicking that button, by just over leveraging, over trading very, very quickly. So if you remove those free dopamine sources out of your life, you will see a drastic improvement in your trading. Other thing is you have to stay accountable. So breaking your rules, breaking your logic, whatever it may be model, you have to stay accountable and hold yourself to being the number one reason of your failure, which is tough to accept in trading and tough to accept in business too. But if you're the entrepreneur, if you're the owner of this, the CEO, there's no other reason that you're failing besides your own lack of discipline or your own decision-making. But the main thing would be detach yourself from the daily outcomes and attach yourself to the strict execution. So if you take a loss, you know that it's part of the model. If you take a win, it's part of the model, but following those rules, as so I'm going to keep drilling it, following the rules of these days, this model, this position size is going to give you the result that you want. You got to review your progression as well. So being proud of what you did right and being a healthy critic of what you can be improving on for the next day, week, and month. So don't use any sort of negative tone or negative language in your journal. Make sure everything is positive and it's okay to be imperfect in trading. Everyone is human. You're not going to be a robot in this and you can always get better, which is the beauty of it. Now, consistency is the main thing that a lot of people lack too. Um, you have to show up and do the hard work even when you do not feel like it. So that means you, even when you know, you're tired in the morning or you're sick or you want to just push the button, discipline will always be higher and have more value than motivation. Although motivation does in fact help. Um, discipline is just going to be the foundation that all of your trading rests on. Do not give up, right? The only way you can fail in this is by quitting. So consistently showing up, consistently not giving up, even when it's difficult, even when you fail that eval, even when you take a losing trade is going to be paramount to your success. Now, last thing I want to cover is thinking long-term, right? Businesses are not trying to make a profit in a week not trying to make profit in a month. They're there for the long term, right? They're there for 20, 30, even 40 years to eventually churn over those profits month over month, year over year. They're in it for the long game, right? So decisions should be based on the long-term success and survival in the game. I already covered most of this, but rushing the steps will only delay the result. And a good analogy for this is if NASA wanted to make a rocket or put people on Mars, they're not going to take a week to make that rocket. Because if they take a week, quickly build it, it's going to blow up, right? They try and do that again. The next week, they try and build the rocket, it's going to blow up. And it's going to take longer than if they just pick the safest and the longest route to success. So if they took and allow themselves a year or two years to build that rocket that they know will work, instead of trying to build a new one every week and it ends up taking five years, then that goal will be met. Because now you've reduced the load on your mental 
you've reduced the load of expectations that you have on yourself on a day-to-day basis. And instead, you're just focusing on the process instead of the outcome, right? You're process-focused and goal-oriented. So a couple of credits and resources from this video. The Mental Game of Trading um, is a book by Jerry Tindler. It's a fantastic resource. I suggest you check that out. Obviously, Matt Shields and ICT also played a big role in the creation of this video. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll put the link to the private group up on the screen as well. If you want to come and hang out, we live stream almost every morning for the private group. And it's just a good community to be a part of. If you have any questions or insights that you'd like to share in the comments below, feel free to post those. And until I see you guys next time, good luck and good trading. Thank you.